Amen, amen. Good morning, West Canaan. Good morning. Um, Reverend Burks is dealing with some busted water pipes in this house, so I'm standing in. But I want to kind of take it back to uh, how we did it some time ago. So we're going to start off with pray for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pray. Father, it is one more time we come to you with bowed heads and humble hearts. We come to you, Father, not for show, but we come for show enough. We come, Father, to praise you, Father, in spirit and in truth. We come, Father, this morning first to say thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to make it safely out to the house of worship, for allowing us in their own homes, Father, to be with us yet not in presence, but in spirit. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father, for thank taking you. care of us last night when danger was all around us. Mm -hmm. We thank you for waking us up this morning to see a brand new day. Thank you. Day that's been coming since the beginning of time, Father, but there are those that didn't make it, but we thank you, Father, for you allowed us to see one more sunny day. Thank you, Father, for a reasonable portion of health and strength. Thank you, Father, for all the blessings you bestowed upon us, Father. For a long time ago, you saw a need, Father, for those of us, Father, who came into this world were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Wow. But you sent your darling son, Jesus, down, Father. Yeah. Walked this place for 33 years, yeah. performing miracle after miracle. Wow. And then, Father, he allowed them, Father, to torture him all night long, drag him from judgment hall to judgment hall. Then he hung on the cross from the sixth to the ninth hour, Father. Yeah. Could have came down, but he stayed up there, Father. Wow. Then he laid his head in the locks of his shoulder and gave up the ghost, Father. But that wasn't the end. Yeah. On the third day morning, Father, he got up with all power in his hands, and oh, we just God, want to God. say thank you one more time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to be in the house of worship, Father. Thank you. thank you, Father, for allowing us to realize that you are God and God all by yourself. Yeah. For all that we have and all that we are is but by your grace, Father. Yeah. We ask that you walk with us on this day, Father. Protect us from danger seen and unseen. While we have to get on the streets and highways, Father, we ask that you would look after us, Father. Put angels around us, Father. Protect us from those who are not so careful. We ask, Father, that you would walk with us, Father, in these times, Father. And look in, Father, as we look in on us, look in on those who are sick and afflicted, Father. Touch those bodies, Father. Strengthen them. Grant them healing as only you can, Father. We ask that you would look in on those away with, Father. Call them back into the fold, if that be your will. Yeah. Look in on those who are prison-bound, Father. Those who are addicted. Those who have all kinds of problems, Father. There are that, those who are homeless. Those who are yet, Father, who are hungry, Father. We ask that you would feed them as only you can. Yeah. And then, Father, we ask that you would stay with us and stand by us each step of the way, Father. Mm -hmm. That you would strengthen us, Father. As our bodies grow old and feeble and weak, Father, strengthen our spirit, Father. Yeah. That we may yet call on you, Father, mm -hmm. when we don't know who's in the room with us, Father. Mm -hmm. When we don't even know what time it is or where we are yet, Father, we want to know you, Father. Yeah. We want to continue to call on you, Father. Call on your holy name, Father, from this day forth until the very end. And then, Father, we ask that you would look at on those who are bereaved, Father, those who've lost loved ones, Father, even those family names called in West Canaan, Father. Touch them, Father. They That's lost a loved right. one, Father. Mm -hmm. Fill that void, Father. Let them know no mistake was made. It seemed like a desperate situation, Father, that we wouldn't wish upon anybody, Father. But we know you've made no mistake, Father. And we ask that you would bless them as only you can. Mm -hmm. And then, Father, when we've done this journey, Father, yeah. when we've gone the last mile of the way and we can go no farther, we ask that you would meet us and receive us in your kingdom. 
This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Thank God and amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Again, we thank God for each of you who are a part of this worship celebration this morning. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Father God, as we come today, we pray that the words of our mouth Father, that we will speak through us and give us the words to say to your people. Father God, even as we preach, teach us uh, through this message today how that we can become closer and closer connected to you each and every day of our lives. Lord, we love you. We give you the praise. Let your spirit be in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Why don't we just give God a hand clap of praise for what we've already experienced here today. Those who are able to stand here in this sanctuary, and if you want to do so at, uh, at home, I want to look at Luke chapter 11. I shall only read the first through the fourth verses, but this entire message uh, will end with verse 11. So in essence, our message is Luke chapter 1, verses 1, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. But for the sake of reading this morning, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us and lead us not into temptation. You may be seated. I don't want to talk about, Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. Let me begin by saying that prayer is the single word that can bring the God that we serve to our rescue. James 5 and 16 bears out that the effectual fervent prayer mm -hmm. of a righteous man mm -hmm. avails much. Yes, sir. You understand prayer turns captivity into freedom. Right. It unites far separated souls around one common seat of mercy. Prayer brings man's storm-driven ship into a, a harbor of safety and peace. Amen. Prayer gives us strength to deal with all of the burdens that we face day in and day out. Somebody knows that prayer lifts you up yes, when you're fallen. Yes, sir. Prayer heals your body when you are sick, comforts you in times of sorrow. While well, all of this is true of prayer, there is even more that has not been tapped or said concerning the power of prayer. Why is it then that we are not more involved in the activity of prayer both collectively and individually. Perhaps we do not understand the magnitude, the power of hope that is found in prayer. Perhaps uh, we just don't fully understand it. People who are weak and anemic in the spirit are generally those who refuse to pray. I ride in one day, I saw a sign, a marquee at a church that said, and you've seen it too, one week, seven days without prayer makes one W-E-A-K. Uh -huh. It is imperative that we as the church learn how to pray. It is mandatory that Prayer becomes an integral part of life of the church and each one of us. After all, prayer should not just be embraced when we face trouble, trials, and tribulation. As this church searches for its next spiritual shepherd, it is through prayer that God will send the right person with the right message at the right time. Mm -hmm. I wonder today, are you praying? 
You understand God honors prayer because prayer expresses faith in God. Amen. None of us would ask God to bless us unless we thought that God could. <laughs> Jesus was a great teacher. He was a great mentor for the 12 men that he chose to be his disciples. He modeled many things for them. He sent them out to visit in pairs. He showed them how to deal with scripture, with temptation by using the scriptures. With every opportunity for ministry that came his way, Jesus taught a lesson. You know that one of the prerequisites for any teacher is having knowledge of the subject matter that one is teaching. In the subject of prayer, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was an expert. Jesus emphasized prayer as one of the greatest needs of human life. Just as spinach was to Popeye's strength, <laughs> Jesus always insisted that prayer was the source of his strength in living and serving God. As he was ministering to the crowds by teaching, preaching, and healing, before and afterwards, he would often go off by himself and spend hours talking with his father. He prayed when he was baptized. He prayed before he chose the 12. He prayed before Peter's confession. He prayed when he was transfigured on the mountain. He prayed when Satan tempted him in the wilderness. He prayed when he fed the 5,000. He prayed when he instituted the Lord's Supper. And yes, he even prayed while he hung there on the cross. Right. One day, the disciples came looking for Jesus. It was suggested to them that he obviously was in prayer. And as they approached him, Jesus' manner of praying was so natural that they listened attentively as he talked with his father. And when he had finished, they said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Notice, if you will, that of all the things that they could have asked for, they did not ask for a greater knowledge of the law. They did not ask for a greater power over the elements. They did not ask for the capacity to be able to perform miracles. They did not even ask for greater love or patience or other character traits. They did not ask for thrones or dominions. They did not ask him to teach them how to preach. They did not ask him to teach them how to sing. They did not ask him to teach them about church history. They did not ask him to teach them uh, about the kingdom of, of Roman rule and Israel. Rather, they asked him to teach them, are y'all going to help me, how to pray. Yes. Now, why did the disciples want to learn to pray? As they witnessed the powerful prayer life of Jesus, they recognized the lack of that power in their own lives. Yes. The disciples wanted to pray because they saw how important prayer was to Jesus. They wanted to learn from Jesus his secret for spiritual power and wisdom. They also knew that John had taught his disciples to pray. 
And they wanted Jesus to do the same for them. Well, we call this the Lord's Prayer. Not because Jesus prayed it, but because Jesus taught it. While they may have had in mind a set prayer they might recite, Jesus gave them and us a model for prayer that Christians are to base their own prayers on. There is nothing wrong with praying it personally or even praying it as a congregation. As long as we do it with a believing heart that is sincere. This pattern prayer was given to us as a guide in our own praying. It teaches us that true prayer depends on one having a spiritual relationship with God. In the remaining time that I have this morning, I want to look at what Luke teaches us about the basics of prayer. First of all, prayer involves having the right attitude. I said it involves having the right attitude. In verse 1, we read, and it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Jesus' disciples displayed the right attitude about prayer. And that right attitude was reflected in that the disciples displayed an humble spirit. They admitted that they needed help. They asked Jesus to teach them. You Bible readers will remember when one day Philip, who had been preaching in Samaria, headed down to Gaza when he met an Ethiopian eunuch who had gone to Jerusalem to worship. This man was seated in his carriage Read it aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Bible says the Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk beside the carriage. Philip did that when he heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked him, do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, how can I? unless someone instructs me. He then invited Philip to come up in the carriage, sit and talk with him. And Philip conversed with him and explained and expounded the scripture. What are you saying, preacher? Before we can learn, we must admit that there are some things that we do not know. And there is much more we need to learn. The disciples displayed a hungry spirit. They were eager to learn. That's why Sunday school ought to be an exciting time. Because you ought to be Bible class. Ought to be an exciting time. Because you ought to want to learn. You ought to be eager to learn. And there is so much that we just don't know. Amen, amen. Are y'all going to help me here? The attitude was like that of the psalmist who says, as the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you. Oh God, I thirst for God, the living God. So my brothers and sisters, when we pray, first of all, we must have the right attitude. Secondly, prayer involves having the right approach. And you see that in verses two through four. When you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed is your name. Your kingdom come. 
Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us of our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. Well, the right approach involves the right position. Jesus said to pray our Father. Before we can pray, we have to be related. There has to be a connection between us, the children of God, and God who is our Father. Are y'all going to help me here? We must be, first of all, a child of God. Then we must be aware that we are children of God and he is our father. So when we begin to pray, the model prayer says, begin with our father. Acknowledge him as your father. Acknowledge that you have an intimate I talked about that a couple of Sundays ago. We have to have an intimate relationship with our father. He is our father. Isn't he your father? And I am. I'm so glad I'm his child. Hallelujah. So the right approach involves the right position. But not only that, the right approach also involves praise. Jesus said, say Hallow his name. Hallow his name. When we pray, we ought to spend time raising up our hands, patting our feet, praising God. I wonder today, you've been through from January 1 up to now. Do you, do you have up in here something to praise God for? Hallelujah. Some have been in the hospital that are listening to me, but you're still here. Hallelujah. Hallow his name. Come on. Praise. Anybody know he's worthy? Praise his name. Not only must we praise his name, but the right approach involves the right purpose. Jesus said to pray for his will and not our will. You know, too many of us are selfish. We won't everything the way we want it. We want what we want. But pray not your will. But thou will be done in my life. Whatever your will is. I don't all the time know what it is. But whatever your will is in my life. Not my will. But let your will be done. We got to know and seek his will. Then the right approach involves praying for needs. Jesus said, pray for not something all next week that you want to hoard up in the refrigerator. He said, but pray for what? Daily bread. Anybody know about daily bread? Daily bread. You know, you know, you know, you know uh, I, I challenge some of us. Perhaps not you, but I, I'm guilty. So I can talk about myself. Now and then I go in my refrigerator. And Brother Allen, I go through my refrigerator. And I have to throw away stuff. Are y'all going to help me in here? Because I got stuff that's a yo in the freezer. Buried. Down in the bottom. So I have to get. Y'all help me here. You have to get rid of it. And you know. Even when you go to the grocery store. And you buy stuff. They got a little date on it. It has an expiration date. Don't use. Don't eat past this date. It might make you sick. Too many of us are trying to get too much. But pray to God. Give me enough for this day. Hallelujah. Can't worry a whole lot about next week. Yeah, it's before me if I live to see it. But right now, today. Anybody can say, Lord, I need you today. Lord, I don't know if tomorrow's going to come. 
But Lord, right now, Lord, right now, I need you right now. Daily bread. That means whatever your needs are, pray for them right now. Then the right approach involves praying. For him to forgive us yeah. of our sins. Oh, I hear you. Hey. Oh, Reverend, I, my name is on the church roll. I don't, I don't do that. Oh, come on now. You're doing it right now. <laughs> you know, when you're not telling the truth, I, I, I didn't say you were lying. I just said you're not telling the truth. <laughs> you're doing it right now. But pray, Lord, Lord, I made some mistakes. Anybody made some mistakes? Yeah. And maybe I still made some mistakes. Yeah. But Lord, because... You died on the cross. Yes, yes, You've already forgiven me. Yes, of all of my sins. Yes. The right approach. Voss praying. That he would forgive us. Yes. Count it already done. Then the right approach. involves praying. That we yield not to temptation. Yes. There's so much out there to tempt us. Yes. There's so much out there to cause us. To go astray. Yeah. There's so much out there. To entice us. We have to pray. Lord keep me. Keep my mind. Yeah. Have you ever said that? Yeah. Lord just keep my, my mind. Keep my mind clear. Yeah. Because if you don't keep my mind clear. I'll say some things. Yeah. I shouldn't say. Yeah. Because folks do some dough down and dirty stuff to me. Yeah. I'm going to sometimes lay my legend up on the trip. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you some few things. But Lord, keep my mind clear. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Keep my mind clear. Yeah. Don't let me yield to all of That's why all this senseless killing and stuff going on in the world. Yeah. People are yielding. The mind is telling them to do something. Yeah. They never look at the consequence. Oh, really? no. There's a consequence. Yeah. Are y'all in here? Yeah. There is a consequence yeah. when you do wrong. Yeah. You got to pay the piper. Yeah. Oh, they're talking about going to court. I heard you, Brother Powell. Yeah. I heard you this morning, clearest day. And I heard you, Brother Strong. And both of you made a good point. And in our world, yes, it's an unjust system, but we're killing each other day by day. Come on, preacher. We're shooting each other Come on. day by day. Yeah, yeah maybe 50% of us in jail, but if we would just stop killing each other, yeah. we wouldn't have to be in the court system. Yeah. We would just do the right thing. Yeah. Stop yielding to peer pressure. Yeah. I got to move on. Come on, preacher. One final point. Prayer involves persistence. When we pray, we pray expecting something to happen. Hallelujah. When you pray, don't you expect God to answer your prayer? He may not answer the way you want him to answer it. But you want him to answer. But God does not always answer when we first call. There are times when you call on him and he doesn't answer. Call on him again. Then if you keep calling a second time, uh, Brother and Sister Brown, he still does not answer. Call him again. Call on him. Just keep on calling. Grandmother's theology says, when I call him up, his line is never busy. You can call him up, tell him what you want. Well, we see this in verses 5 through 8. In this parable, there was a man whose friend stopped at midnight unexpectedly and he had no bread to give him so he stepped next door 
to borrow three loaves from his neighbor. He wanted to just simply show the traveler the normal hospitality that was shown in that time and culture. But that old grouchy neighbor said, don't bother me. My door is already locked. I've already put in my code. My alarm is already set. We're all in bed. But although he would not get up because he was a neighbor's friend, he did get up because the neighbor was bold. The neighbor was persistent. And you know what he did? He stood there knocking. Leave me alone. And he just stood there. Go away. He just stood there knocking. If he did not get did not answer the door, the whole neighborhood would be an awakening. Failure on his part would not only bring shame and embarrassment on his neighbor, but would also shine a light on himself. Well, the argument is clear. If persistence finally paid off, as a man beat on the door of a reluctant friend, how much more will persistence bring blessings as we pray to a loving God? After all, you do know that God our Father is already in the house with us. God may not answer our prayers right now. He may not answer them in the way we think that he should answer. But God answers our prayers if we persevere in prayer. The point is also clear, although idle and vain repetition is forbidden. Jesus says in verse 9, And I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. Well, we must first ask the Savior to help us. If you ask him, Burdens will roll away. <laughs> if you ask him, dark clouds will turn to sunshine. Yes. Just ask him and bills will be paid. All right, all right. If you ask him, he will heal your body. Yes. Just ask him, he will soothe your sorrow. Mm. Anybody ever ask him to wipe? The tears from your eyes. Not only ask him, but Jesus said, if you seek him, then you will find. Seeking means you got to put forth a little bit more effort. Yeah, in Luke chapter 15, we see three of the most memorable of Jesus' parables. First, there was a shepherd who sought after one lost sheep. Then there was a widow who looked all through a house trying to find one lost coin. Uh -huh. Then there was a man who was distraught yeah. because his son had gone into a far country. Yeah. All I'm saying is when you seek God, you got to put forth a little bit of effort. Yeah. And then if there still is no answer. Wow. Yes. Jesus says knock. And it will be opened to you. 
Ain't God all right? When desperation sets in, just not. When it seems like he will not answer, pound on the door. There are times when our backs may appear to be against the wall. It is then you got to have holy boldness and just keep on a knocking. Well, I'm done now, but Jesus summarized the lesson in verse 11. It closes with an emphasis on God as Father. He says, if a man shall ask bread of any of you uh, that is a father, will you, if a son asks bread of any of you that is a father, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, yeah. will you give him a serpent? And you know, the father always looks out for the welfare of his family. Yeah. And uh, the father is not going to give his son or any of his family anything that's going to harm them. Uh, even uh, so, we should not stop uh, when we do not see an immediate answer. Right, right. We ought to pray, pray. and pray. Yeah. pray. Pray. Pray without ceasing. Yeah. God will either answer our prayer. Yeah. God yeah. may say wait. Yeah. And sometimes God yeah. just might say no. But God, he'll answer every one of your prayers. Yes, when you pray to God, just talk to him. Just like you're talking to each other, just talk to God. Anybody here ever talk to God? Yes, when you talk to him, we ask him and God answers we seek, God shows up, we knock, God opens the door, the Bible says we should always pray and not faint, prayer is the key to the kingdom, faith unlocks the door, yes, but there are times God got to wait on me. You don't hear me. I said there are times when God has to wait on me. On Monday, God waited on me. I said I'm too tired. Tuesday and Wednesday, he waited on me in my pain and in my loneliness, yeah. he waited on me in the hustle and bustle of Thursday. He waited on me in the excitement of Friday. He waited on me while I was cheering on my favorite teams yesterday. And even in the joy of a Sunday morning, every now and then, God is still waiting on me. And I don't know about you, but one day I was lost. He waited on me. I was on my way, on my way to hell. He waited on me. And I remember the old mother's prayed the prayer uh, yeah. that brought me through. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for prayer. Since God, Jesus has given us a model. Uh, why don't we say, our Father, who art in heaven, uh, hallowed be thy name. Thank you. Thank you. I can call on you. I can call on you. Whatever it is, I can call on you. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. We have a model. 
We don't have to pray the exact words. But we have a model of prayer. Yes, Thank you. We have to have a kinship. Mm -hmm. A relationship. Yes. A connection. With our father. Is he your father? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Is he your father? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One day this life will be over. Okay. Hallelujah. He gives us so much day in and day out. Puts food on our table. Watches over us. But above all, he forgives us of all our sins. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's praise God. Give God a hand clap of praise. Choir is going to come. We have a model for praying. Be connected. Be connected to God. Talk to him. Sometimes we slip and fall, but let's talk to him. Let's reconnect. As this church looks for that next leader, let's everybody in this church be praying day in and day out that God will send the right person. God will direct our search committee and that we can move forward as the West Canaan Missionary Baptist Church. God bless you. Jesus is on the main line Tell him what you want oh, Jesus is on You ought to call him up.
Lying never God. busy. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. The line is never busy. Yes, Come on. Oh, man, yeah. our choir just blessed our heart. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Doesn't get too late, does it? Yeah. Man, you call some of us. We got called ID. Hey <laughs> man, I, 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 hey, if, I, if I don't recognize the number, come on, please. If I don't recognize the number, I don't answer. Hey man, because they they try to sell me Medicare and all that kind of stuff, man. They try to sell me. Yeah, they try to they extend the warranty. Hey, see, I'm not the only one. Amen. They, they, they disguise it with a local number. Yeah, and I said, well, you know, is that, maybe there's somebody from West Cana calling me. No, I found out. No, they're making West Cana. <laughs> that's that's their work. And I don't know. I'm going to get out of here, but I don't know why they tell you so well. If you don't respond to this, you're going to be dropped. Why don't you just drop me then? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, I. you can always have a little fun. I uh, yeah. I was laughing with a friend of mine. I said, uh, we get ready to give out tithes. And, and now uh, uh, it's, it's, it's here. We're going we gonna to give. Uh, many of you, it's been one of those months. We got to catch up. Amen. So we catch up so we know we're going to do that. But I, I noticed uh, how a lot of our commercials, how they have the commercials intended for us, mm -hmm. especially with the car wrecks. Amen, Mister Mister. Whoever got me a million dollars, I wouldn't be on. I wouldn't be on a television television. <laughs> got me no million dollars. <laughs> Amen. But the one that really gets me, and I'm getting out of here, uh, is the Medicare one. And <laughs> I'm just get out of here. But the one that, that gets me is like you can have. A uh, hundred, call them up and you'll get some money. Money. <laughs> you get some money. <laughs> Back in your check. And do it now. <laughs> Come on, let's stand. <laughs> Man, they know, how to, they know how to fix it for us, don't they? Do it now. Amen. You know, you know why um, um, uh, John Amos, you have to go back, Black History's coming up, but go back and look why John Amos and Esther Old had a problem with good times. Did y'all know that? I heard about it. I'm going to educate you. Y'all learn when you come here. I heard it. Go back and you read it. I had a problem with good times. They had a problem with good times because of how they stereotyped yes, yes. Jimmy Walker. With that dynamite and all of that, and it showed black ignorance. And they did not have black writers. There were no black writers for the show. So when they went into the producers to say, hey, this is not, you know, a typical, you know, black families, and I just said, wait, then you know why that's why John Amos got killed off. They killed James. Well, come on, y'all go back and, and y'all y'all read this. They kill him off the show. All right, it's time to go. Father God, as we come, we learn a little bit every day, Lord. Yes, sir. We learn more and more. Yes, sir. But Father, we just thank you for having brought us, kept us. And Lord, let us continue to be taught to get closer to you. And we do that through our own daily prayers our meditations, our devotionals, our group me readings, through all of that. And Father God, even as we go up and down the road, we just talk to you. Lord, we don't have to have long, drawn-out words, uh, but sometimes we just say mercy. Yes, you can't say have mercy, we just say mercy. Yes, Lord, receive our prayers, whatever they may be. Yes, Father, forgive us of our sins. Bless our offering, Father, our giving as we prepare now to give. And Psalm will be coming here today. Thank you for a beautiful day yes. that you've given unto us that we're able to be here. Yes. 
Continue to bless this West Canaan church family. Bless our leadership. Bless our pastor emeritus who are here to get ready to celebrate uh, another uh, birthday, I believe, this week. Uh, bless him and, and, and Sister Ford. Uh, bless them. Throw your arms around them. Yes. And now may the grace of God and love and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.